today what we want to do is talk about uh, what are we doing from a configuration management standpoint. And the first thing that you would do as you set it up is you would go in and, and describe the type of assets that you want to track in the system. And for different types of assets, you can have different rules. Uh, do I want to track asset tags and serial numbers? So if we set up a configuration item type, uh, like a Dell server, that we do want to track that, then that will become a required field. Uh, we're going to track things like, you know, who's the manufacturer versus the sales vendor. That could certainly be different. It may be you buy HP laptops, but you get them through CDW. So we have the ability to uh, be able to do that. Uh, we can track whether a CI type is a high-level asset, like a, a server or a workstation, or is it a component that we also track because we keep our own parts inventory. Uh, and of course, ultimately, you'll want to know how many you own, how many are available, because it is a true running uh, inventory system as you uh, as you go through there. And then for each one of your assets, once they are configured, this is the type of information that you're going to be tracking about a given asset type. So let me just bring up a real one uh, that I have here. And one of the things that we do is, once you have your configuration items in SDE, then we, of course, tie those to things like the incident module, like the change request module. So here you can see I started working an incident for one of our clients, and it immediately told me that uh, there were a number of configuration items assigned to this particular client. And if I wanted to see what all this client owned and therefore what we were tracking in their inventory system, I see that this particular client's using a BlackBerry. He's got a Dell laptop with all the docking station stuff. Uh, here's that access to SAP claims and the employee expense reporting system. Uh, he, the, this person has a licensed copy of Microsoft Office 2007, because one of the goals of putting in asset management in SDE is to help you track your software licenses and stay in compliance with uh, uh, what your legal obligations are there. So in this case, I had associated this ticket with a particular asset, this is a Dell laptop. And the reason that association becomes important is that's then what builds the inventory service history. In other words, everything that's happened to that asset over its life cycle from procurement to retirement. So if I launch the detailed view of this asset, I've got a little quick launch button there. Here is that particular Dell laptop. I can see what I paid for it. Uh, I obviously, for this CI type, had checked that box about it requires a unique serial number and asset tag field. So that's why they are bolded, and that's why I have them included here. Uh, I can see who the vendor of this particular device is when I installed it. It's currently in production, as opposed to other states that may be uh, uh, defined within your organization. I can see also that it has a warranty contract that came with it, and it also has an associated service contract, which we'll look and view those as we, we go through the, the remainder of the session here. Currently, it's signed out, and this could be a person's name if it were a single-use asset, or in this case, we've assigned it out to a location because oftentimes in organizations, especially like banks or medical facilities, more than one person uses a given set of assets, so we'll give it a location name and then define that there are multiple users of that system so we can keep track of what issues we had with the item itself, but also what were the issues that the individual users of the system uh, had in there as well. Uh, I can indicate uh, if you want to show this, if you want to show on the, the uh, actual form the financial information about the uh, actual purchase and checks and whether it's a depreciated item and whether the number of depreciation periods, that could be there as well. But the real meat of the life cycle is down in your detailed section below. So under my service history tab, and if I blow that section up, I can see everything that's ever happened to that Dell laptop since the time we first procured it and installed it back here in 2008 to every repair or change in configuration or, you know, here's adding memory, here's uh, adding a software application to it. I have a, a complete history, date, and timestamp as to when each of those items uh, happen. 
and I then automatically, without any additional work on my part, I have the incidents where that particular asset was associated, they automatically get linked to the record, to the configuration uh, item record, as well as any work orders, which are generally used for subtasking in uh, Service Desk Express, where we have a tech going out and actually doing something on site, site that's normally done under the work orders tab. And so they are automatically associated uh, with the record as well. And if you are utilizing the change management module that, that uh, can be part of SDE, if a change request were generated that affected this particular Dell laptop in this case, those records would automatically uh, be able to be viewed in here as well. Uh, under your components, that's if I were tracking subcomponents, and under your attributes, if you want to track the detailed information perhaps that you got from one of your discovery tools by reading like the WMI files off the computer as to you know what kind of BIOS and how many memory DIMMs do you have and what type of video cards do you have in it. If you wanted that extra detail, that can be tracked right within the record itself, or we can just provide a link into your discovery tool like an SCCM or whatever that you may be using uh, to pull that. We also, for any given uh, asset record that we have out there, we have the ability to form relationships. Now, that make a lot of sense on a, on a laptop, but at the server level, understanding what are the other uh, upstream and downstream physical and logical relationships it has to other configuration items. And that becomes especially critical in change management to understand what would be the impact of taking this server down to make a change. And we'll We'll take a look at that. Uh, we would also then, as I mentioned, we have the ability to set up preventative maintenance schedules, which I'll go into a little bit more detail. And again, for a given server, if it were the server hosting one of your business services, uh, we could tie that to it uh, as well as you go in and, and look at that asset. So one of the things we can do is, uh, is as we're looking at it, and here I've got one where it's actually a Dell server, and since I configured my relationships, and by the way, I'll make this little caveat, if you own change management within Service Desk Express and you're on version 10, which is what I am, then you have the ability to go in and grab any one of those assets. This is a Dell server. This is a Dell server. And I can bring out this configuration item viewer to understand you know, what impacts it would be. So in this particular case, I can see that I have a redundant uh, server here, so I've got a load balancer. So even if I were to take this one Dell server down for maintenance, that would be OK, because as we can see, I have a, a, uh, a parallel uh, exchange server over here where mail could still be routed. So both of those servers are uh, being uh, used to support a critical business service that we have. And they both also have views into the underlying SQL database that we're probably using to support that. And as I click on any one of these servers, of course, you'll notice that it immediately will come over and give you an overview of that server. Uh, you know, CI type, serial number, asset tag. Are there any open incidents on that server? Are there any open problem investigations going on? Are there any open uh, work orders that are going on? And are there any open change requests that are associated with that particular configuration item? And if I wanted more detail about that, I could just right mouse click and say, open the detail about that record for me. And it brings back the detail, much as you saw when I was looking at the, uh, the Dell laptop earlier. And of course, under my relationship tab is where I have it linked to the load balancer. I also have it linked to the SQL database. And here is where I have defined that it is part of the infrastructure that supports their business service called email, which is their ex exchange services that we, uh, uh, that we have out there. So this has been a great addition to version 10. And again, it's, it's extremely helpful when you get into the, uh, the change management module so I can understand what would be visually what would be the effects of, uh, of taking a device down to, uh, to do some work. So once you, uh, once you configure that inventory, of course, uh, you get all your items in there. Then you basically get a running inventory. How many have you bought? 
uh, you know, what's the CI type, what's the description, who is the manufacturer, how many did I physically purchase, how many are still available. Obviously, the delta between those two means that of these 139, oh, well, let's pick some more logic here, of these uh, four Apple monitors, I've uh, got three available, so one must be assigned out to an individual or a location. So you can certainly get that, uh, get that running inventory. And for most of our clients, we add this little field here for what's your reorder point so we can automatically send out a notification if you get below what your uh, desired stock level for any given, uh, any given item might be. Um, then you can do things the, the way you actually assign a configuration item or an asset out for usage is we call it a configuration item assembly ID. And as I mentioned a few minutes ago, that could be to an individual if they are the only user of that particular asset. But you also have the option to just you know, do it to uh, a location or a shared workspace location, such as this Cubicle 308, which is at the ABC location. Uh, again, I could get more detail there. But notice that I said there are two users uh, at this shared location. So I'm going to track issues that Martin has versus issues that Scott's have. But I'm going to also be able to know what are the issues that have affected the individual configuration items that are part of that assembly ID. And likewise, very easy to pull up. Here are all the incidents. Here are all the work orders that have been associated uh, with that particular, uh, that particular assembly ID. Um, by default, then, that means I also have a lot of information about my vendors. So if we just pull up and take a look at some detail here, we'll pick our friend Dale here. You can see we're tracking uh, you know, who the vendor is, what do we buy from them, what are our normal terms. Uh, yes, they are approved vendor to do, use the purchase request module with, who our normal contacts would be, what are the types of things that we buy from Dale. Uh, based on these categories we define here, what do we currently own for Dell? And again, in version 10, they gave you this great little uh, ability to maximize your detail area here. And likewise, do I have any service contracts with Dells? In, in this case, it says, yes, I've got uh, Dell contract number 345. So if I double click and open up that service contract, I can see that it's uh, a phone support is an eight-hour turnaround. I know that this is running through July of uh, 2011. And the price of that contract when we took it out a couple of years ago was uh, $2,135. Uh, sure, there is a rule that's going to send out a notification 60 days in advance of that uh, expiration popping up. Uh, if the, this is Dale, so it really doesn't matter, but if you had outside vendor support, where you got on-site, on-premise service as well, if your contract was limited to a couple of your locations, if you are a multi-location company, uh, we could define which locations are covered. And then, obviously, what are the configuration items that are covered under this Dale contract versus perhaps some other Dale contract or HP or whomever you, you may be using. So it, it really becomes a full, complete life cycle from the time I procure it, when I assign it out to groups, uh, the support that I have with it over the life cycle of the, uh, of the asset.